Did you know that Ukrainians killed Kennedy, ate the last dodo bird and made Twinkies disappear in 2012? Meanwhile, Zelensky personally organized the January 6th insurrection, while the Ukrainian army contributed to the fall of the Roman Empire. I hope the answer wasn't yes, but it very much could, especially if you were online and used Elon Musk's website formerly known as Twitter. And if there were some major negative event happening lately, like let's say someone tried to assassinate Donald Trump, be sure you'll see something like this. Maybe Zelensky has decided Trump is a problem. If the shooter has a Ukrainian passport, well... Or this. What is the BlackRock connection? Thomas Matthew Crooks was in a BlackRock TV ad. BlackRock will profit rebuilding Ukraine. Trump would end the war in Ukraine. Connect the dots. But the American presidents aren't the only politicians Ukrainians try to kill, according to Russian assets on the internet. Here's another suggestion made by the Russian source. Extraordinary statement by Foreign Minister Lipovsky in connection with the revelation of the organization of the assassination of the elected Slovak president Pyotr Pellegrini. Wow, so now Ukraine killing every leader of Europe who stands against this proxy war. This should be massive, but will be hidden by the mainstream media. Obviously, the Czechs have concrete proof, as they've expelled the ambassador. But it would still be good to see some proof to stick it to the NAFO bots. Cannot find any verification this is accurate. Got a link? Can we have some link information? Okay, those people are complete nutjobs. No one takes them seriously. But what if... You were a really serious person, like, let's say, a congressman, but you still needed to blame Ukraine despite the absence of evidence. What would you do? We can spend billions on Ukraine, but can't protect the former president of the United States? What's going on? Ah, yes, they should have sent Patriots and F-16s to protect Trump rally and bomb the shit out of that roof with sniper. That was Josh Hawley, a Republican congressman with a weird obsession with Ukraine, just like a lot of other right-wing speakers. Remember wildfires on Maui? Horrible catastrophe. Who could be responsible? Arson? Global warming? You know the answer. How about the people in Maui? Imagine being a person in Maui you that lost that your home. They give you $700 and then you still can't rebuild. It's a year later, nothing's been built. And at the blink of an eye, they give $100 billion to Zelensky and... and well, even worse, they accidentally sent Ukraine $6 billion. <laughs> Because as you know, the United States doesn't actually send a lot of cash to Ukraine. The US sends mostly guns, and the amount of money is the price for the new guns procured by the US Army. But again, I think Joe Rogan has a point. They definitely should have provided Maui residents with 155 artillery shells instead of housing. Maui fire survivors are living in tents while the US sends billions to Ukraine. True, Maui residents could really live in comfortable Bradleys instead. But if you think Maui is the furthest place Ukraine's geopolitical ambitions have found themselves, don't worry, we're not done yet. They tried a coup in Bolivia because of Ukraine, Israel and Lithium. It failed. But Melania, you'll say. You couldn't possibly blame Ukraine for literally everything bad. Well, think twice, because this one has become the most viral types of clips at some point during the war. This is Kensington, Philadelphia. For the past year, this part of the US has been hit with the xylazine epidemic thanks to China. Instead of addressing the problem, our current administration is more focused on sending money to Ukraine to fund a proxy war. I am so sorry that all these terrible things like the opioid epidemic happened because of Ukraine. Apparently the 24th of February 2022, when Ukraine dared to be invaded by the Russian army for zero reasons, became this key point in American history when all the problems started. But I don't think bombing the shit out of some poor addicts in Philly with Heimer shells would help. You may be thinking, hey, this is mostly coming from some deranged lunatics and anonymous accounts on Twitter, and if a person believes in this, it is probably not the biggest problem. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Here's a normal journalist working for Russian opposition media trying to blame the Buffalo mass shooting committed by a neo-Nazi on Azov. The Azov symbol is in the news not just in Slovakia, but also in Buffalo, where Saturday's vile racist mass shooter was a fan of the same altered black sun that Azov uses behind its Wolfsangel. The first page of Peyton's Gendron's hate manifesto reportedly contains the symbol. The symbol. But what news is he talking about? The Christchurch shooter said he received training from Azov in Ukraine, and for some reason no one talks about this. Is no one in the liberal media going to mention how the Buffalo mass shooter shares the same ideology as Ukraine's Azov battalion? Ah, so like a complete lie from Russian assets in social media. Great. 
But in all seriousness, this is not coming out of nowhere. While it seems to be some crazy takes by crazy people, they are not. Russia has been planting these manipulative takes for the longest time, and this is its way of depriving its victims of any and all support. They also do this domestically, like here, when there was a terrorist act in the Russian Republic of Dagestan made by the Islamist terrorists. And American people deeply involved in politics, for some reason, just love to repeat it. Of course, neither I nor other Dagestanis have any doubt that this terrorist attack in one way or another related to Ukraine's assets. Against the backdrop of our forces' success in the SO zone, this attempt to destabilize the situation in our country from within. If the Ukrainian government was behind the terrorist attack, as looks increasingly likely, the US must renounce it, else we become complicit. The US would never forgive a terrorist attack like this, and neither will the Russians. Who's that, by the way? Ah, yeah, David Sucks, a Republican sponsor and a person who had a speech at the Republican National Convention where he thought his mission was to spread more Russian propaganda. How did it go, by the way? Then he provoked, yes, provoked the Russians to invade Ukraine with talk of NATO expansion. Afterward, he rejected every opportunity for peace in Ukraine, including a deal to end the war just two months after it broke out. I hope he had a good time. Whenever something wrong happens, be sure to search for tweets with Ukraine in them, and you will find American politicians, businessmen, journalists, and regular lunatics and bot accounts all doing their homework for Russian propaganda and blaming whatever happens in the world on Ukraine. And even though one would think that it's fun and exciting to be the world's most influential country, it is important to remember that Ukraine's fierce image comes not from aggression and crimes, but from valiant defense of our own country from a murderous Russia. And when Russia finally falls, be sure, we'll gladly take credit for that.